In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Welcome everyone to the celebration of these stations of the cross this evening. And Anne is going to introduce the set of stations that we will use. The attitude stations have become a highly valued feature of the gardens of the Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham. Located under the covered walkway, this highly creative work by local artist Jane Quayle uses the Beatitudes from St. Matthew's Gospel to explore the Passion of Christ. We have juxtaposed the images by Jane with the text from the Walsingham Way of the Cross. Differing details of the Beatitude image for each station have been highlighted to mirror the differing perspectives of Jesus and Mary and ourselves as onlookers as we pray the stations. We prepare to explore the Way of the Cross through the eyes of Jesus and Mary we will hear the untold suffering that they experience during the final hours of Jesus's passion. Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you and implore your most loving heart to assist us as we meditate on your sorrowful passion. Your love drove you to suffer so much in your adorable body and your most holy soul, even unto death on the cross. We implore your help, your grace, and your love to have a profound compassion and understanding of your sufferings as we meditate on your way of the cross. Amen. First station, Jesus is condemned to death. In this solemn moment, my death or the death of all creatures must be decided. I hear the cry of all, crucify him, crucify him. Not knowing what else to do and for fear of being deposed, Pilate has a basin of water brought to him and washing his hands, he says, I am not responsible for the blood of this just man and he condemns me to death. I see my son as Pilate shows him to the people, disfigured and unrecognisable. I am deafened by the outcries of crucify him, crucify him. My maternal heart is drowned in sorrows. The very thought that my son, my God and my life has to die is to your mother more sorrowful than death itself. by those people who had benefited from and been greatly loved by him. Loving Jesus accepts death for me in order to give me life. Am I ready to accept any sorrow to prevent Jesus from being offended and from suffering? For your son you The second station, Jesus receives his cross. Beloved cross, I finally embrace you. You are the longing of my heart and the martyrdom of my love. 
In you I concentrate my entire being, and in you I place all of my children. You will be their life, their light, their defense, their safety, and their strength. You will assist them in everything and bring them gloriously to me in heaven. O cross, pulpit of wisdom, you alone will teach them true holiness. You alone will make of them heroes, martyrs, and saints. I see that the people are restless and await my son with fury to make him take the cross already prepared. I see my son lovingly gaze at the cross and before embracing it, he kisses it. In it, he establishes a portion for each soul to make the heirs of the kingdom of heaven. Then, exhausted and panting, he eagerly allows the cross to be placed on his most sacred shoulders. The love of Jesus for the cross and his eager longing to die on it for the salvation of souls are immense. Do I experience love in suffering like Jesus? Do I too ask for my cross? A loving Jesus accepts death for me in order to give me life. Beloved Jesus, holiness, which has no equal, teach me to imitate your love of the cross. Third station, Jesus falls for the first time. My pains are such that I feel crushed under the cross. I fall. My wounds feel the harrowing effects and pour forth new blood. My heart beats more vehemently and new pains pierce it intensely. I offer reparation for those who do not carry their crosses with resignation, but rather they swear and get irritated. I also offer reparation for those who sin out of ignorance, anxiety and weakness. I see my son taking the first steps under the enormous weight of the cross. After only taking his first steps, he falls beneath it. As he falls, he bangs against the rocks and the thorns are driven more deeply into his head. I see he does not have the strength to get up, so his enemies, irritated, force him to stand with kicks and shoves. As his enemies manage to put him back on his feet, I see him stagger and hear him panting. In my weaknesses and falls, I am ready to stand up again and throw myself into the arms of Jesus. Do I detest and avoid any stain or shadow of sin? The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. I am profoundly transfixed upon seeing my mother's mortal paleness and all of my pains reproduced in her by love. I see my mother pushing her way through the crowd as she desires at all costs to see me to hug me, 
and to say goodbye to me for the last time. I move my steps in her direction, but I can hardly exchange a glance. The soldiers notice it and, striking and shoving me, prevent us from saying the last goodbye and I see her petrified with pain. I, unable to endure our physical separation any longer, hasten my steps to give him my last embrace and dry his face that is completely covered with blood. I search for him, but as I approach him, the soldiers notice it. They strike and push him, preventing me from saying goodbye. The torment I experience is so overwhelming that I feel I am about to die. I am ready to sacrifice even the most legitimate and holy affections to fulfill the will of God. Let me reflect on those moments when I may feel distant from God or may not feel any spiritual consolation in our pious devotions. The fifth station, the Cyrenian helps carry the cross. My executioners, fearing I might die under the weight of the cross, force a Cyrenian, Simon, to help me carry it. Unwilling and complaining, he helps me, not out of love, but because he is obliged. Then in my heart, echo all the complaints of those who suffer, who lack resignation, and who act out of rebellion, anger, and contempt. I see my Jesus undergoing untold sufferings, and at each pain he endures, a new sea of sorrows opens in my pierced heart. His enemies, Fearing that he may die under the cross, force a Cyrenian to help him carry it. What a harrowing blow to my heart this is, being unable to sustain my dear Jesus in his many overwhelming pains. Jesus looks for my soul to keep him company. How do I accompany him? Am I happy to be alone with Jesus, or do I look for the company of others? When I suffer, do I have the intention of becoming a companion of Jesus to relieve him from the weight of the cross? I must say to him, you have suffered too much. Take up your rest, and I will suffer in your place. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. So many insults and abuses. I stop and watch as Veronica, who, fearless and courageous, approaches me with a cloth. She lovingly dries my face that is completely covered with blood. I leave my face impressed on the veil as a sign of my love. I see my beloved son overcome with weariness and all bent over he can hardly walk i see that he stops and tries to look i ask myself what is it 
What is he looking for? Oh, it is Veronica who fearless and courageous approaches him with a cloth and dries his face that is completely covered with blood. He leaves his face impressed on it as a sign of gratitude. Is my composure an example for others? And are my steps like magnets which call souls around Jesus? With my acts and my example, I must put a divine mark on the world so that Jesus may be recognized by all. Am I fearless and courageous when it comes to glorifying the Lord? Or do I let myself be won over by human respect and what other people think? Seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. The executioners pushing and flogging me make me fall under the weight of the cross. With lashes and kicks, they force me back onto my feet. I offer reparation for repeated falls into sin for mortal sins committed by all classes of people. And I pray for obstinate sinners while shedding tears of blood for their conversion. His enemies, disapproving of Veronica's courageous gesture, flogged him, push him and shove him along the way. He moans and falls under the cross. The soldiers see him suffer from so many martyrdoms and from the shedding of so much blood. Despite this, with lashes and kicks, they barely managed to force him back onto his feet. Do I let myself be formed by God's hands? I must accept everything that happens within me and that which is not sinful is God's divine crafting. Am I constant when I endure repeated trials? Or do I complain, get irritated and lose my inner peace? That peace of heart which is necessary to allow Jesus to find a dwelling place within me. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. The love does not stop, even under the weight of so much pain. On seeing the pious women weeping because of my suffering, I stopped to console them, saying, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. I offer reparation for lack of charity and I obtain the grace for humanity to forget self and be at the service of others. A few more steps and again I see him stop and yet under the weight of so much suffering his love does not stop on seeing the pious women weeping on account of his suffering. He forgets himself and consoles them, saying, 
daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. What a sublime teaching, how sweet his word is. When the Lord gives me favor, light and love, do I use them for the good of others? When the opportunity arises, do I make the passion of Jesus the object of my conversations? Do I place in my conversations the intention of relieving Jesus Christ? Do I try to speak of the will of God, infusing in others the spirit of Christ? The ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. The executioners fly into a rage upon hearing me speak to the women of Jerusalem. Pushing and pulling me, they make me fall. The weight of the cross crushes me and I feel myself dying. Almost dragging me, they take me up to Mount Calvary. Pulled and trampled on, I reach Calvary, leaving behind me the red trace of my precious blood. On hearing my son speak, his enemies become furious. With ropes they pull and push him with such rage that he falls. As he falls, he bangs against the stones. I see him touch the ground and gasp in his blood, but his enemies want to make him stand. They again push him, pull him up by his hair and kick him, but all in vain. I can see he is dying. What pain, my heart breaks with grief. Do I accept life's difficulties as God intends? Do I give Jesus the freedom to operate in me? Or do I see everything in human terms and as meaningless thereby rejecting God's divine crafting? Do I abandon myself into his arms in order to receive all the blows which the Lord will dispose for my sanctification. The Tenth Station Jesus is stripped of his garments. My executioners strip me of my garments. As they strip me, they also tear my lacerated flesh that has to adhere to it. The wounds rip open, my blood flows to the ground in torrents, and the pain is so overwhelming that I collapse. In being despoiled of my clothes, I offer reparation for sins against modest, modesty and purity. And for those who are bound to riches, honours and pleasures that their hearts make gods of them. His enemies strip my son of his garments with such fury that he collapses to the ground, almost dead. I see that he is shivering and an icy mortal sweat invades his most sacred humanity. How I want to hold him to my heart and warm him. How I long to give him my life and blood in exchange for his life and blood. Do I walk on the street 
modestly and composed so that so as to be an example to others do i look only to god for approval or do i rather beg esteem and honor from people do i bear with patience the mockeries and troubles others give me am i ready to give my life for their salvation The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. I hear the blows of the hammer of my executioners, who are forming the holes into which they will drive the nails. My heart beats more and more vehemently as I yearn to lay myself on this bed of pain and seal with my death the salvation of all souls. I say to the cross, O cross, hurry, satisfy my ardent desire of giving myself to souls. I anxiously wait to extend myself upon you, to open the gates of heaven to all of my children. I see my son express his love for the cross when his enemies command him to lay himself on it, and promptly he obeys. As I see him extend himself on the cross, I want to press him more tightly to my heart and kiss him. I do not want to leave him. It would be more bearable to be nailed to the cross with him, for true love tolerates no separation. Do I always keep my mind, my heart and my entire being transfixed with the nails of God's will? While being crucified, Jesus looks at him, looks at his executioners with love. Do I look with love at those who offend me for love of him? The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. Feel my heart pounding so violently that it pushes up my ribs, causing me harrowing pain. Love inflames my heart so much that I am no longer able to contain it. I feel not only an intense bodily thirst, but a burning thirst for the salvation of souls. I repeat, I thirst to every heart, saying, I thirst for your will, for your affections, for your desires, and for your love. Then, gathering all my strength, with a loud and thunderous voice, I cry out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. I bow my head 
and breathe my last. At the foot of the cross, my son grants me with his dying lips, my motherhood over all humanity and the gift of all my children. Shortly thereafter, among untold physical convulsions, he breathes his last. After his death, all nature is shaken. The sun darkens, the earth quakes, all the elements are affected. And it seems, along with my heart, they partake in his sorrowful death. In the deceptions of the betrayals of souls, am I ready to forgive as Jesus forgives? On the cross, Jesus fulfills the will of his Father in everything, and he breathes his last with a perfect act of abandonment in the Father's most holy will. Do I fulfill the will of God in everything? Do I abandon myself perfectly to his will without looking at whether it is advantageous for me or not? The 13th station, Jesus is deposed from the cross. Disciples, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, depose my body from the cross. The first one to receive my body onto her lap is my sorrowful mother. And within her arms, my pierced head gently rests. Her sorrowful face is covered with tears as she gazes upon my face. I see a soldier approach my son and with the thrust of a lance pierce his heart, causing the last drops of blood and water to gush forth. Soon thereafter, I see they are preparing to take him down from the cross. So I accompany his dear disciples to remove the nails from his most sacred hands and feet. After they have deposed him, I am the first to receive him onto my lap and I place his pierced head gently in my arms. What pain and sorrow this causes me to see my son so unrecognisable, so disfigured. Jesus allows himself to be disposed into the arms of his mother. Do I deposit my fears, doubts and anxieties into the arms of my mother, Mary? Let us pray. Sweet mother, with your maternal hands, remove from my heart all that keeps Jesus from resting in me. Fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. Disciples and my sorrowful mother place my body in the sepulchre. My mother takes my hands between hers and kisses them and presses them to her heart. She continues these acts of love to each of my limbs. 
my disciples hasten their steps to close the tomb. My mother embraces my body and with sorrow allows the tomb to close. I prepare myself for the final sacrifice of having to bury the lifeless body of my son. Perfectly resigned to the will of God, I accompany him and place him in the sepulcher with my own hands. I reverently kiss and arrange his limbs and offer him my last goodbye. On account of my immense love and sorrow, I feel my heart snatched out of my bosom and embrace him. Then I allow the tomb to close him in. In my sorrow, I kiss the stone and crying, give him my last goodbye and I depart. Let us pray. My dear mother, when Jesus hides from me for the good of my soul, Grant me the grace you had when deprived of Jesus, so that I may give him all the glory you gave him, especially when he was placed in the sepulchre. Let's now pray for the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So thank you everybody for being with us this evening as we have made this way of the cross. Thanks especially to all those who have taken a part in leading us in our reflections. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace. Thanks be to God. Oh, yeah.